Hello and welcome to episode 12 of our Falcon Motor Glider restoration. If you are new to this series then check out the playlist in the top right corner for all episodes. And consider subscribing if you like my videos. Last time we cleaned, repaired, sanded and polished the rear canopy. We also sanded all the old paint off the two motor cowling halves and mounted fasteners to the fuselage. This time we will restore the main wheel, make a new axle, mount the wheel and adjust the brake. We will also mount some mystery rings to the side of the fuselage. The hub of the main wheel was originally painted in a black paint that was flaking off. We therefore sandblasted all the metal parts of the wheel. The hub is made out of cast aluminium which is quite rough. In order to prevent it from getting dirty again very fast, and also to protect the steel parts such as a brake lever, we want to paint the wheel in primer and to component paint. This means that we have to first disassemble it. The axle is a little stuck so it needed some persuasion with a rubber hammer to come apart. Since sandblasting the wheel was done quite some time ago, the steel brake lever picked up some light rust again. This means that another quick round of sandblasting was in order. After this was done, we masked all the parts of the wheel that shouldn't be painted. We especially do not want to have paint on the inside of the brake drum, even though we have the option to sandblast it again, since now we have a nice shiny machine surface. A similar thing is true for the wheel bearings. Although they have dust covers, it would be a shame if some paint seeps in and make them run less smooth. We then first applied primer to all parts of the wheel. The sides where the spokes can be seen took quite some time, as every individual cavity needs to be painted and it's quite tricky to get in every corner. The primer seems to nicely fill the rough surface of the cast aluminium parts. The surface became significantly smoother. After the primer dried we noticed that we forgot to take out the pin that connects the brake cable to the brake, which we removed. The two component paint that we are applying now would have locked it in place quite firmly. This paint will provide the actual layer of protection and make the wheel look nice and shiny. This is the same paint as we use for all the tubes on the fuselage. It's called DD Lac. Then it was just a matter of removing all the masking tape such that we could start to reassemble the wheel. It turns out that this can take quite some time to do, perhaps even more than painting. The brake shoes still look in a very good condition. There's still quite some material left and the wear seems very even. To assemble the brake shoes to the holder we first put the component that pushes the brake shoes outwards to the drum. This is where the brake lever will attach later. Mounting the brake shoes goes quite easy if you sort of fold them, place it around the mounting points and then unfold them. With a little help of a screwdriver they just pop into place. We applied copper grease to the axle and all the other moving parts of the brake. This grease is very temperature resistant and will not become very thin when the temperature goes up, for example due to braking. You really don't want to put normal grease on your brakes as it might end up in the brake shoes or drum, which kind of defeats the purpose of having brakes. The axle required a bit of convincing to be removed, so it also required some convincing to be reassembled. A few taps with the rubber hammer made sure of that. We then mounted the brake lever back into place in the orientation that we thought it should be mounted and tightened the nuts. In the end it turned out that this was good enough. The brake cable that we got with the plane was very old and the ends were quite frayed. We therefore decided to make a new one. We got some new cable, put the Nico press brushing around the cable and made a loop. Inside the loop we put a metal eye that prevents the cable from getting too small a radius. To prevent the new cable from fraying and to prevent fingers getting cut by sharp strands of cable, we put the rubber tube around the cable end. The cable could then be mounted to the wheel with a pin that goes through the brake lever. Due to paint this required a few gentle taps with a hammer. The pin is kept in place with a split pin. This means that we now have a fully functioning and assembled main wheel again. The original axle that came with the plane is not in a very great condition anymore. Although it's strong enough and not very rusty, most of the threads on the end are stripped off. There's certainly not enough thread anymore to fulfill the two turns of thread after the nut requirement. 
We therefore decided to make a new axle out of a longer, but slightly worn out at the ends, other axle that was available in the workspace. Thanks Peter, this really helped us out a lot. We were able to cut off the worn parts and ended up with enough length for our new axle. We then made thread on both ends of it. Normally I use cutting oil when doing this, but there was a special tapping grease in the workspace. Of course I wanted to try this out, and it works great. The advantage of a cutting oil is that it doesn't flow away while tapping. With the grinder we then made some camphor on the ends of the thread to remove any sharp edges. Here's a quick comparison with the old axle, with a quite damaged thread on the end and our new shiny axle with newly cut threads. Now that we have a new axle and a completely restored main wheel, let's mount it. The plane is currently resting on a block of wood under the mounting points for the main axle and held upright by stands on either side of the fuselage. This means we have to bring in the crane to lift the fuselage up and mount the wheel. We put a strap through the fuselage, running over some strong points in the fuselage such as where the tubes come together where the wings are attached. With this strap in place we lifted the plane off the ground. You could say that this is the closest that our Falcon has been to flying in at least 5 years. We then fed the brake cable through a small hole in the wheel well that we made in a much earlier episode and placed the wheel inside the wheel well. Taking care of course to align it properly. On the inside of the wheel well there is a pin which prevents the brake assembly from rotating. A tap on the wheel has to slide over this. With a bit of aligning we then put a small part of the old axle as a temporary placeholder to keep the wheel in. The wheel is a quite tight fit in the wheel well so a little convincing was needed to get the wheel in the right place. We did this by carefully lowering the fuselage to apply some pressure on the wheel. By doing so the wheel went into place without any trouble. With a bit more aligning we could then mount a new axle. A few taps with a rubber hammer pushed it all the way through the wheel, pushing the other axle out. Then all that was left was to put some rings on self-locking nuts to keep it in place. The brake on this plane is applied by pulling on the air brake lever. This will deploy the air brake center at the very last bit of travel, pull on the brake cable and apply the real brake. So the goal of this adjustment is to apply full brake at the end of the travel of the air brake lever. Not earlier because then the air brakes don't deploy all the way and not later because then the wheel brake doesn't work properly. It turns out that the 5mm hole we drilled a while ago was in exactly the right place. The cable doesn't touch the wheel well when tensioned. We could of course claim that this is due to proper measuring but I am more sure it's like 90% luck. The brake cable can be tensioned with a system very similar to that on a bike. The cable is currently much too long, so we cut it roughly to size. A small bushing that can be clamped to the cable is used for rough brake adjustment. The bike-like adjustment system is then used for fine tuning. A quick brake check shows that everything is working properly. Maybe a bit of final adjustment will be needed, but that will be done later. We also applied some mystery rings to the outside of the fuselage. If you have an idea why these will be there, then leave a comment and in the next episode we will see who had the right answer. The rings are made out of plastic washers, the inside hole drilled to a larger size. They are pasted to both sides of the fuselage with the glue that is used for gluing fabric to the plane. With a temporary bolt we held them in place while the glue was drying. 
I'm curious about your comments. That was all for this episode. If you liked it, then please leave a like or even better, subscribe to this channel. See you next time.